In this lecture, let's try to go ahead and submit this particular form. So as we all know, in order to submit a form, we first need a submit button. So let's add that particular submit button to the form up over here. So I would say button and the type of this thing is going to be submit and let's say the name of the button is submit as well. So if we have the submit button, now the next thing which you need to do is that you need to create a method which handles the form submission. So whenever we submit the form, there's an event called as on submit on the form which gets executed. So I would add on submit here and on submit is going to be nothing but it's going to be a method just like we have for the on change, which is this dot handle change. So I would say something like this dot handle submit. And again, as we have created these methods here, we also have to create the method for handle submit as well. So I'll go ahead and create that. So I would say handle submit and again, I'll make use of arrow notations and in here inside the handle submit, just as we have event passed over here, uh, this also accepts an event. So I'll pass that event here, but for now we won't be making use of that event inside handle submit. And now what I would do is that I would simply go ahead and whenever we submit the form, let's say we want to log the value, whatever is entered in these input fields to the console. So if I say uh, John here, and if I say Ford here, and if I click on submit, uh, those values should appear up over here in the console. So let's see how exactly would we do that. So I would simply say console.log. And in order to log those specific values, I'll create an object here. And I would say F name for first name, and in order to get access to the first name, I will make use of state. And in order to access state, I need to say this dot state. And then in order to access the first name, I would say dot first name. Give a comma as I have to add another property called as L name or last name. You could actually name these properties as anything, but just for the sake of simplicity and just for the sake of distinguishing this state value from this, I'm saying it first name or F name and L name. And in a similar fashion as to this, I will get the last name as well. So I would say this dot state dot last name. Okay. So once we have this, let's try to see if this would work. So I would say John Ford. If I click on submit, you will notice that the value just flashed up over here and it disappeared. And also the values from here disappeared as well, because what happens is that when you click on the submit button, the entire page reloads. And when the page is reloaded, the state is actually lost and we don't want that. So we want to prevent the default behavior of the page, which refreshes on form submission. And in order to prevent that default event, I simply need to go inside the handle submit and I need to say e dot or event dot prevent default. So the prevent default actually prevents the default action of refreshing the page whenever the form is submitted. So now if I go back, if I say John and if I say Ford, if I click on submit, as you can see, those values are logged here as an object. So we have the F name value as John and the L name value as Ford. So this is how you handle the form submission. Now over here for the form submission, we have simply logged the value of first name and last name in the console. But technically in real world applications, you would submit these values to the backend or save these values to a database. So we are also going to learn that in the upcoming lectures, but for now, hopefully you have learned how to create form in reacts, how to handle the input fields and how to handle the submit action. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.